Okay. We are back on the barn. Hopefully by the end of tomorrow, the barn door project will actually lead to it having a door on it. That'll be nice. Because having this plywood here is kind of unhandy because, you know, you can't open the door. Um, did work on the mower some this week. Didn't video out any of it because, although I think I hopefully got it figured out, there for a while the mower project was turning into a real fuster cluck. So, uh, hopefully we'll be back on that by Tuesday, Wednesday time frame when all my parts get here, but that will be explained later. So anyhow, uh, this is all the material we got for the door. Um, I should have been started on this a whole lot earlier today, but I went to Menards yesterday after work and was there for about two hours because, um, well, I had to order this stuff. Uh, sometime two you know, almost two weeks ago now because of all the stupid things menard stocks barn tin but they start stock it in all these goofy pastel colors and of all the stupid things they do not stock red barn tin because apparently nobody builds red barns go figure so i had to order barn i had to order tin for it so it took a while for that to come in and i just went and picked everything up at one time um but when I went and ordered this stuff a couple weeks ago, um, the guy that was in there working the building materials counter was spot on and he knew exactly what I wanted and I told him what I was doing and he said, okay, you need this, 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 and this. And he wasn't working yesterday when I went and I had to order a couple of things that I forgot and there was a kid working there and I'll give him credit, he tried, but he did not know. I, it, was, it was a coaching effort, so... Um, but anyway, in amongst all that, I forgot these two 16-foot 2x6s, which I had ordered and paid for. I just completely forgot to pull them out of the bunk. So I had to go back and get those this morning. And then I had to get a couple 10-foot 2x6s for some trim that I um, wasn't counting on at first. So, so these 2x6s are going to be what goes across the top to hang the track on. These 2x6s are going to be the trim on the outside of the door. The eight foot two by sixes are gonna be the trim on the end of the blocks on the inside of the door. Um, all this lumber, the treated two by sixes for the bottom of the door. These are for the door frame. That treated two by four was initially gonna be for the bottom of the door, but I changed my mind, but I got it anyhow because there's always a use for a treated two by four and I already had it on the pick list, so. And then I got 20, six foot of door track if I remember right I think one's a 16 and one's a 10 um there's flashing that's already pre-bent to fit the track and then this is the outside of the door frame and the bottom trim piece so which this looks like it might take a little bit of work because of all the stupid things also Apparently Menards does not stock, at least our Menards does not stock this piece. And I just got lucky and they had a had her a 12 footer that had been returned. So they had that laying around, but it looks like it got a little a little tweaked. So I might have to try to close that up. So and then obviously four four nine foot sheets of barn tin, I think. What are you barking at? There is, I don't see it. So anyway, uh, Dad's gonna come over here after lunch and help me out. Teeter! Either go get it or quit barking at it, whatever you're looking at. Teeter. So here before lunch, I'm going to get the plywood off the door, get all this dirt cleaned up, um, and basically get everything I could get it get some tools down here so basically when dad shows up i'm ready to rock and roll um so i'm just gonna go ahead and do all that off camera because there ain't nothing worth videoing and we will catch you guys when dad gets here and we actually start working on the door okay i got most of my dirt moved some of it was 
kind of hard to dig because it was frozen, so that's why that stuff's still there. Um, that's all out of the way. Obviously, the plywood's off. I put a fourth coat of linseed oil on once I got the plywood out of the way just for safe measures, so that ought to be plenty. And like I say, once we get everything framed in and this is all done, I'll strip the paint off of this section right here where I can get to it, and we'll put some linseed oil on that on the bottom there. Um, I went through with the grinder and kind of dressed up the edges a little bit on the wall. Um, this block that I replaced, I dressed that in to make it blend in a little better, which that turn actually turned out really good. Um, and then this block here, if anybody remembers, was protruding out like three quarters of an inch past the face of this next row up because for some reason that those uh, bottom two rows of block are cattywampus to the rest of them. Um, that's not, that was not going to work leaving it that way for the way the door's getting framed in. So with a lot of grinding, I was able to get it pretty much flush. It might still be a little, you know, I almost have to throw a square on it, but I don't want to grind too much because I don't know how much that block is left. Not that it matters because this should all be full. Of, I think I filled it up to mort with mortar. Yeah, I filled this block and this or these three blocks up with mortar before I put that one in. So it should still be plenty strong. But anyhow, I'm going to go get me some lunch and then I'll get dad coming and start working on a door. stopped a long ways up so I'm just going to double them up. Of course, I don't know, maybe that is a good idea because that's going to end up hurting that water. because of that goofy block down there. I don't know how much 
I filled them with mortar up to that one that I replaced, but I don't know. Okay, you can't see much from in here, but we threw the tin back, or the, not the tin, we threw the plywood back on here just to close the hole up for the night so we could throw everything in here and not have it get frosted on. Um, but obviously we got our wood in here because you need something to screw, well, A, you need something good to pull the door up against and something to protect the block and something to screw your latches to. So that's what that's there for. And also dad noticed, I didn't notice, I got two free, two free nine foot pieces of galvanized barn tin. They got my four pieces of red in there and then they, they packed them in on both sides with just regular galvanized. So that's neat. I don't know if they're long enough to do anything, but well, there's, they should be nine foot. I don't know if anything around here. Actually, that barn out back, that little little shed that's not doing anything, the tin on the roof of that is getting pretty rough. And I bet nine foot might damn near, I would obviously need more, but two free sheets would give me a start. I mean, I probably could just nail that tin back down, but I don't know, we'll see. And then we got outside for the strikes and then that overhangs the inch and a half and they're screwed into the trim on the end of the block and then got 
the ledger board up there and the track is up what the hell was that i don't know don't know if you guys heard that or not some over there went thunk some i don't know so that's how far that's as far as we made it and then we got the uh end pieces cut for the door dad was going to take them home put them in the mill and do a little bit of work down on the end to make everything a little fancier um slowed up got slowed up a little bit today because i had to go get some different uh concrete screws and some different uh had to get some screws to uh, get that track bolted down um these were the concrete screws i had originally which i honestly didn't know other than obviously different diameters i didn't realize that they i mean other than tap cons i thought that these things were were the concrete screws i never knew that they made concrete screws like this and i'll tell you what these things right here are bad to the bone I like these things. Those are junk. These are awesome. And in doing that, I had to get a longer bit so that we can go through the board, through the block, and have enough clearance to get everything in. And then these are uh, construction grade broadhead or panhead screws which I can't get up on a ladder to show you. Um, screw or getting that uh, track screwed on was kind of a pain because the way that system's made, you put that on before you put your siding on the barn because you put that track on, then your flashing goes on, and then the siding goes over the flashing. Well, we're kind of doing things bass backwards here, and the barn is sided, and you can't put the track on before you put your header board up because then you can't get screws in the top of the board and then you're trying to also manhandle a bunch of shit plus um i got a 16 foot section of track and a 10 foot section of track to make up the 26 foot so you don't want your 16 foot section of header lining up with the joint on your 16 foot section of track so you got to split everything so it wouldn't have been feasible to put it on to begin with so basically the best you could do is get up in there and start them screws it kind of with an with a long ass extension on the driver this at the shallowest angle you can get so they they're not exactly laying perfectly flat up against the plate but we did what we could do um because unfortunately you can't even the other thing we looked at was going through and pushing the siding out and going inside the barn and running screws straight down from inside the barn well the siding doesn't have enough flex in it a to get out far enough to get a driver through unless we went up and busted loose that next row of nails up which is kind of a scary thing because one of two things is going to happen the nails are going to come out or you're going to or you're going to snap the siding as old as it is and that the thought of snapping siding just isn't isn't really a very good thought at this moment so plus even if we did that and got it pushed out far enough it's damn near a 10 inch drop from floor level down to where the screws need to be so getting it is just we did the best we could with what we had and the plans changed a little bit for the flashing but we'll we'll uh talk about that when we actually get it done so um anyhow and also i didn't show you guys i made filler blocks to fill in these mortise joints and then got to looking while we were putting the door in and i probably ought to make a set to fill in those two mortise joints where the old posts used to be so Yep, that's where we're at anyhow. So I guess we will come back to this tomorrow and hopefully, with any luck at all, it won't take too long to get that door framed up and hung and get the last few odds and ends finished. So we'll catch you guys in the morning.
You got my framing for it. All right, Dad had to run home for a minute. I had a guy dropping off some cylinders. Um, so when I was doing this morning, I went through and put uh, another, or split the difference and put more screws in these boards, mostly because you can't get good lumber anymore, and this shit was so twisted and warped while we were trying to put it on, it wasn't even funny. So most of this is to keep keep it pulled out straight or get it pulled out straight um and then in these i didn't double i just it went in between everyone and put a single in the center so i got that done and that obviously we got the door framed out it's squared up so while he's gone i'm gonna finish screwing it all together gotta pre-drill the dang holes because the wood's so grainy the screws try to do weird stuff while you're running them in. Plywood's obviously just there to hold it square while we're working on it. That's going to come off.
random thought here, but I stopped for a second and everything got quiet and I stopped for a second to listen to everything going on around here and it is February 12th. We're not even to Valentine's Day yet. Perfectly beautiful sunny day. I'm out here in a sweatshirt. It's not even noon yet. You could probably dang near shed the sweatshirt by this afternoon. Um, we're supposed to get a little, or I think we're supposed to break 50 today, but birds are out here doing their thing. It's just a nice day, I tell you what. Ain't that right, pup? Okay, 
so the door is pretty much done i'm gonna go through and double screw the tin for strength um plus i just have a bunch of extra left over where the bag go oh, i think it's in nope there it is i got a bunch of screws left over and with but I, I already have a bunch of screws left over from the big barn so uh I don't need any more screws laying around, so let's get rid of them by screwing them into the tin. But doors on, uh, flashings on, latches are on. I put the latches on before we put the tin on just to make things easier. Actually, Dad had me put the latches on before we put the tin on to make things easier. Um everything's adjusted the way it's supposed to. The only thing that I still have to do aside from putting the rest of the screws in. Um, by all rights, when I poured this new um, base, footer, whatever you want to call it, that we added on here, it would have been nice to have went out another inch and a half so that you would have been out at the edge of your door jam when it was all framed in. However, the original barn footer is so screwed up um just because of the nature of the stone and whatnot you couldn't really add another inch and a half on the outside without getting over onto the slab on the outside of the foundation plus you have this whole screwed up menagerie of crap right here so with that being the case kind of designed the door in such a way where i can take some of that heavy conveyor belt i got and uh, screw to the bottom of it sticking out flat so it'll kind of seal this up um so i got to do that and i have to finish mounting this roller i got to drill two more holes and put two more screws in i have to mount the end stop which isn't going to work out it's it's going to work. It's it's going to end up as more of a catch than a stop just by its nature um because of the way yeah, get down here where I can see um the way everything worked out um the bottom of the door is actually a little wider than the top. So this won't be able to stop the door necessarily um but it's it's gonna be, act as a catch more than anything so but i gotta get that mounted and then i got another roller that's gonna act like a mid roller it's gonna come in down here somewhere so i gotta get that stuff mounted finish putting screws in and put that rubber strip on so we'll see how far i get first things first i'm gonna clean up some of the mess i got going on here because it's starting to bug me so dad had to take off and go do a repair on a or a field repair on an excavator that took a shit so he had to steal the one ton and take the trailer so anyhow i'm gonna do some cleaning here real quick and get rid of what i don't need and we'll be back Okay, I went through and double screwed all my tin. How do I make that door solid as a rock? It makes it, it made it rattle a hell of a lot less, I can tell you that much. So anyway, now, where did I put my impact driver? Ta-da. So now, we can finish mounting our stuff. Hopefully the heads on these screws are big enough. Stay, stay standing up there. Oh yeah, they're plenty big. Plenty big.
I can just mark these. That way I don't gotta try to hold all this crap. Got a hammer. Looks like I might. I'm pretty sure this is extended all the way out. It's all the way out. I might have to put a couple washers behind it just to space it. Otherwise, it's going to end up really tight. So let me go see what I got. Okay, that's mounted. I had two half inch flat washers that had enough surface area to keep it from being wiggly it's a little hillbilly but when you're dealing with wood and concrete and whole nine yards all at one time and then I did have to radius this edge right here because if you caught the caught it just right sliding the door in and out of it it hooked the door so I broke that edge off round and now it does exactly what it's supposed to so now we can move down here and do this roller door out the way. We haven't figured out why that why that door hanger clicks like that. It's kind of annoying. Okay, stops mounted, main rollers mounted, inter intermediate rollers mounted, everything works like it's supposed to. The one thing that might end up changing is because, um, the door, when you get it off of the frame, probably because the lumber in it's, you know, garbage modern lumber, the door has a twist to it when you get it off of that flat surface there. And when you get it out to this roller, the bottom's kicked in, which if you push out on the door, it'll go and, you know, engage like it's supposed to. I think what might end up happening is we're, I'll make a big, I'll make a nylon block to go in place of this roller that's got a long leading edge on it so that the door will just naturally fall in behind because it's got plenty of play. So I guess last thing I got to do is we got to cut. 
and screw on a bottom strip for this thing to seal up or seal everything up. Looks like I want about three and a half. So I'll go get that cut and screw it on. we're all squared away I'm about halfway done nailing the siding back down I made it up to here and I'm kind of out of nails so I gotta go get some more I figured I'd use nails rather than screws because I figured nails would be less likely to split the wood when you bottomed it out or bottomed it bot, blah, 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 bottomed them out since that wood's kind of dry and brittle so far I've been right it hasn't split well, I split one but it was already kind of split to begin with but that uh, um, yeah conveyor building did the trick it sealed up that gap pretty good so door still rolls it's got a little bit of drag to it which I honestly is probably better because before you could take one finger and push it and you damn near throw it off the end of the track that's the last thing I got to do is get some stops made, um, travel stops, since obviously that one down there is going to be a little loose, not that it's a terrible, I mean the bigger, the bigger one's going to be getting one down on that end so you can't run the door off the end of the track, but, and then I'm also going to, off the end of the door here, put an eye bolt in it so that when the door is all the way open you can throw that latch in it and latch it so the wind can't get a hold of it, so but some little detail stuff so hopefully with any luck at all other than well weather dependent i still got to pour some concrete to fill that hole there on the outside um but with any luck at all get uh the last rest of the steel i need to make my last beam and hopefully with any luck at all by next weekend be able to set both beams in here and haul the stone in and at least for the time being other than um rearranging stuff and there's some stuff that's got to get out of here um it'd be nice to find some pallet racking to organize those uh mid mount implements um and then hopefully i got a guy coming he's gonna buy five the only tires back here i'm keeping are those uh uh 45 degree 18 4 16 ones everything else back there I got a guy from Ohio supposed to come and buy the the two turf tires, the two old combine tires off the 525, and then that single 18426. He said he wanted all five of them. So hopefully he comes through and then those tires will be gone. Um that bench might stay in here just because it's handy. And it doesn't take up a whole lot of room. The bench, this bench has got to go away. This sign's got to go somewhere where it'll be safe. Um yeah, basically once once these posts are in and everything's buttoned up it's just gonna be a matter of organizing stuff so that we can start backing stuff in here so but this video's got long enough if i'm gonna get it up yet tonight i gotta shut down and get over to mom and dad's and get it edited so with that being said that's it for this one we'll catch you guys on the next one